Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today will be another video about Docker Container. In this video specifically, we're gonna show how you can install Mili. And before you start to ask why I want to install Mili, I will give an example why you will want to install Mili. I like to cook and I like to use different recipes. The only problem that I have is all the time that I want to do something, I needed to go in the website, I needed to mark all the ingredients that I need, and sometimes I forget to mark all the ingredients. Also, I take time to do the food and I don't do my proper review. So sometimes I forgot to do something and would like to make a comment for the next time, unless I print it and make a note in a paper, I will forget. So this melee comes to sort it, so they can create auto-importation, so you can import your recipes directly from the internet or can create your own. Also, you can create automatic shopping list and in this way, you don't need to take time to write everything. Also, with the app, you can only click some options and that they will check out that food because you already have. So save a lot of time and avoid that you buy unnecessary ingredients. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, let's understand a little bit more about it. As I told in this video, we're gonna show how we can install Miley. And to install Miley, first we need to understand how we can use this application. So if you guys come here my screen, this is the website for Miley. And here what they say, it's a recipe management for the Mourner household. It means that you can manage all your recipes and make your life easy. But before you start to install anything, you need to understand how it's run. So if you come here in live demo, you can have an idea how they will run in the limited option because we are not logging. So here will be all my recipes, some of those have pages and some of those don't have. So if I choose any one of those, here will be all my ingredients. I'm not sure what language that was imported, but this is all my ingredients. Here is how many serves that I have. So let's choose another one that's in English. Okay, here, rose cauliflower. So the picture up here, here a brief description, how long it will take to cook it, how long to prepare and how long only to cook. So in total, it's one hour and 10 minutes. Here will be all the ingredients that you need to have to do this recipe. He will have some targets that will appear and here is step by step how to do it. And if you want, we can click original recipe and that they will give me where they find it and how they simplify it. So I can close here and I can set some timing and I can print. Of course, because I'm not looking as admin or as a user, I have limited access for the information. So then we need to install, and once the team install, we can start to run a little bit more from the application, try to understand a little bit more for it. So have this one in mind, let's return for Mili and come here a little bit lower. So they say that it's self-hostable, it's uh, import recipes, family friendly, and they give a little bit overview for this application. So if I come here, I can go to get start. In get start, they will show exactly the same page, but one thing that's interesting is that you can run this view in your computer, in your laptop, in your tablet, or your phone, and everything will be connected together using your server. So you can import recipe, automatic backups, you can do different interface, different groups, and continue on. So I can come here and put get start. Before we start to get start, and look for all this information, you can have different migrations continue on, we need to look what information or what system that we need to have in order to be able to install it. So I come here, install checklist, and they say that uh, both you need to have a Docker Compose if you want to choose the SQLite or you want to choose Postgrate, and here they say that you need to have the Docker, Docker Compose, and uh, then we're gonna install the Miley from the GitHub register. And here they say that have support for ARM64 or IMD64. At the moment, they don't have support for 32-bit ARM or 32-bit system. 
And the rest of the information, you don't need to worry because we go step by step how we can do the installation. The first option that they give will be the ASCII light that they say that recommends and the post grade. If I come here, ASCII light, they already give my environmental that I can download or can run it. And if I come here, my post grade, they give exactly the same or a little bit more complex environmental that you need to install. So if I come here, ASCII recommends, they say that this option is run for 1 to 20 users. You have a zero configuration for a database, but you have some limitation and that will not run as much as you can. And if you come here in Postgrade, you don't have limitation for how many users that you want to run. And you're gonna have some extra search. Of course, it's not complete, but you're gonna have more information. But you need to set up your Miley app and you need to set up your Postgrade and make sure that both connect and run well. If one is running and another is not run the way that I expect, potentially not have all the performance that you expect. So if I come here in SQL Light recommend, and this option that we're gonna install. So in this way, I can copy this information and in my case, I will use Portainer because it will be easy for me. So I open my Portainer and here it's running my Portainer with a few containers. And if I come here in stock, I can add a new stack and here in that stack, I will paste this information. I will copy Miley here. If you look for this stack, I have a problem they don't have the revision that I wanted to run it. So in this way, I can add the revision. This way I can space and put revision 3.7. This revision will work well with this container. So now we started to look what information that we can modify in order to make this application to work. So first thing, we have the image that we're gonna install. Don't need to touch it. This is the image that we want to run. This is the contain name. This one is the restart policy. It means that always will be on. Here will be the port that will be running. So initially will be port 9000, but today we use the port 9925. If you already use this port for any reason, you can change. In my case, I'm using the port 9000 for portainer. So this port 9925 will be great for me. Here, if I look, will be how much memory that will allow them to use. And here will be my volume. You have two options. You can put your absolute path directly in your server, or you can leave this volume. If you want to backup all your Docker containers, here will be a little bit more difficult, but you can do it. But if you want only to be easy installation, you can run this way as a volume for your Docker. What I suggest you is to use the absolute path, but we're not gonna use it because you want to speed up the process. Other thing, here will be allowed sign, so you can sign in or use your user. Here will be your PUID and PJD. In my case, I'm using Synology NAS and my PJD will be this one and my PJD will be this one. So you need to find your PUID, PJD in your case. If you no, don't know your PJD or PUID, it's simple. You can open put inside put, you can put ID, and your user and that it will give your PJD and UID. Here then will be my time zone. In my case, I need to change this time zone to Europe, London. In this way, it will get the correct time for me. Here will be the numbers of the workers that I want. So if you have uh, four cores and you have uh, one worker, it means that it will allow mass one worker and that will not use all the cores, will not use all the power. But if you have more powerful system, you can put more. Or if you don't use so much, you need that system to be always free, you can put more or less. In my case, I will leave one one. And here will be my base URL. What I'm gonna do, I will put as sauberlab.com and that after I need to define any NGX or Cloudflare or anything to have external access for it. Here will be the volumes that I'll have. So if I leave this volume as a standard, I need to leave this volume. If I want to choose my absolute path, I can come here and delete this volume. Now I can come here and put deployed stack. This part of deployed stack will be really fast and that they will basically run it. But you cannot start this application yet because if you come here in container, they still as I starting. 
they take a couple of minutes until they are ready for you to start. So if I come here and I come here in log, I can see what is going on. So I need to wait a couple of minutes until they give all the information and say that this container is start. So let's wait. Once that application shows as a health, I can access the port 9925, but I need to use 192.168.1.251.2 dots 9925. If in the future I wanted to have external access, I need to configure it Prox Manager or I can configure it my Cloudflare. So here I will click this page and that appears this application. At the moment I don't have any receipt, so I cannot search anything. So if I come here to login, first time that I do login, they will ask me to use those information. And if I use it and put login, they will allow me to do the first setup. In this first setup, I can just follow this step by step. So I'll put next, I'll put my user, I'll repeat my password, and here I can enable advanced containment and put next. Then I can select if I want to have this application as a public or not. If I leave public, it means that everyone can access my application and see what is have there as a receipt. But if not, if I don't select this option, they will not allow others to see what I have unless they log in and have access for it. Other thing, I can use the use seed data so I can collect all the recipes and try to make a collection for it. And I put next. Then they will give overview for all the information from application. If I put submit, they will start the process. They will start to upload my password, update my settings. In a couple of minutes, they will give the next page what allowed me to do any extra activity. Once that you see this page, it means that your application is complete and now we can start to import everything that I want. You can come here and back up a store, you can receive immigration, you can create a new receipt or you can import from URL. So in this case, I will put home and now I need to do some base configuration. One thing that I discovered that's quite interesting, you can come here in settings, in group, if you click this group, you can select some others information. So if I put show nutrient, show receipt assets, default, no, I don't need it to do. Disable user for comment on receipt, no, I don't want, and put update. So in this way, if I come here, I can start to import it. So if I can, can click create, so if I put create, import, I can import receipt. So let's do carbonara pasta. They give me this spaghetti. Let's copy it and here will be step by step how to do. So if I copy here and come here and put paste and create, they will allow me to import this recipe. They will give what the information, all the ingredients recorded, how many serves that will allow me and here the nutrients for this food. And then step by step how to do it. Also interesting thing, you can see how long it will take to do this food, how long to prepare all the ingredients and how long to cook. Once that I finish to do this food, I can click here, I made this and I can make a comment and I can upload pictures and add it to timeline. So last time that I cook it was this day, I can see in my timeline what I did. If I have pictures, will show the picture of the food and I can like it as a favor. I can define what score that I have. Also, I come here and edit and I can define some categories the way that I want. So if I wanted to add something else, I can do it. And here, if I save, I can do a add to the plan. So suppose that I want to be in a specific date, I can define that will be today's dinner and I put confirm. So it will appear in the plan. If I come here, it will appear this one for the plan for the dinner. I can select for the lunch. Also, if I create a shop list, suppose that I want to do dinner and I put create. So I come here in planning, add, add it to the list, select what list that I want and here will be all the list that I want. If I want to select all here or if I want to select add to list, if I come here in my shop list, there will be all the ingredients that I need to buy and if I select it here, they will show that it's a red bot and when has been completed this activity and the receipt 
or recipe that I want to do for this specific shop list. If I have more than one, they will appear all here and I can set up which user owns this information. Also, I can come here in search and I can search for my tags. I can search for the ingredients for my food. I can search for tech categories or I can select as random and let's say I want to try one recipe that I never did before. In this way, we know how to do our food, how to plan and how to do a shop list. So I hope that you guys like this video. If you guys like this video and like this application, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and see you next time. Bye.